Welcome everyone to tutorial number seven in this R tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to be reviewing how to select predictors for multiple linear regression. This is a really important topic in statistics and for that reason, I wanted to have a dedicated tutorial on it um, to show you how you um, apply the methods for selecting predictors for a multiple linear regression. And we're gonna to continue to use the child aggression study data um, to demonstrate this in R. Um, as always, uh, to begin, please download the R code and the data sets on our GitHub. Make sure you change the directory to the location on your computer where you saved those files. And then finally, to remind everybody that we will be going quickly over some code that, that has been reviewed extensively um, and in detail in previous tutorials so that we really focus each tutorial on the new uh, code and functions uh, and don't get bogged down in things that we previously um, went through in detail. So you need to install two packages and then load them since we're going to be using these two packages in this tutorial and we're going to disable scientific notation and set our directory and then we're going to import the child aggression study data into our data frame. And before we actually show, before I show you how to apply these methods. I'm going to just talk in general about why selecting predictors for multiple linear regression uh, is such a problem. And some of this might be review for some people, but probably for a lot it isn't. It's totally new. And the problem is that there's an exponential problem of model selection, which is the, the issue that for any given set of predictors, which you know we'll say that you know the total number of predictors is k, there's two to the power of k minus one distinct models for any set of predictors. So, and the minus one piece is the fact that we don't typically uh, include the, the intercept only model. So what we have here is an exponentially increasing number of distinct models for um, as the number of predictors um, that could potentially be included in a model increases. And so for our particular study, we have five predictors. And so that means there are 32 minus one distinct models we can choose from to analyze the child aggression study data. Now, why is that an issue? So we that's an issue because we need some kind of rational process to choose the model out of the total um, set of distinct models. And uh, that's what, um, these methods that we're going to be reviewing today are trying to do. They try to provide some rational process for filtering through the, these set of distinct models in order to select the one that ultimately fits the data the best. Now, in terms of the actual methods for selecting predictors, in general, and all of this is reviewed in our statistics lectures, which is the part two of the linear regression. Um, so I'm just going to briefly review it here. There's three, the one in 10 rule, the criterion based methods and the stepwise pr procedures. The one in 10 rule is not necessarily a method, but rather an upper limit of how many predictors you can include in a linear model, which is that you can only have a maximum of uh, your sample size divided by 10. So in our case, that would be about 66 predictors. If you have more than that, what happens is, is you get you risk getting what's called overfitting of your model uh, to the data. And what that means is that basically your model starts to resemble the data too much, and that reduces its ability to generalize to new samples. The second and third um, methods are, are really both of them in, in different ways are trying to produce various measures of model fit in order to select the subset of the total set of models that could be um, that could be used to analyze any given outcome measure. So for the criterion based methods, uh, there's five main ones that I personally consider when I'm building a multiple linear regression. Uh, you might include more, but these are the five ones that I think are, are the most important. Some may disagree with me, but and that's fine. So the first is the t-test of the parameter estimate. So all things considered, a statistically significant predictor, you know, that might be something you want to include in your final model of the data. 
Similarly, we had a whole tutorial on model comparison. If a predictor incrementally predicts the outcome based off of the F test, you might also want to consider including that predictor in the outcome or predictor in the model. And relatedly, you know, all things considered, a model with a higher unadjusted or adjusted R squared is a better model or fits the data better than one with a lower uh, R squared. Similarly, Mallow's CP is another measure of model fit. Um, basically, the lower the value, the better, but there's a little bit of nuance because it depends on the amount of predictors in the model. So you uh, a good fitting model will have a Mallow CP somewhere around uh, K plus one. So K is the number of predictors in the model. So if I have three predictors in the model, then the, the ideally a, a, a Mallow CP would be somewhere in the range of four. And then finally, there's information criterion. The two big ones are the AIC and the BIC. So AIC stands for Akaki's information criterion. I hope I pronounced that right. And then the second is Bayesian information criterion. And both of them, uh, the way you interpret them is the lower the value, the better the fit. And then finally, there's stepwise procedures. And I'm not going to go into detail about these because we have a, um, we, we talk about them in our statistics lecture. In brief, um, I strongly caution against using these procedures because there's some very profound problems with, uh, with these procedures. But in any event, there's three main ones, forward selection, backward selection, and sequential replacement. What forward selection is doing is it starts with no predictors in the model, so just an intercept only model, and then adds sequentially the most explanatory predictor, and then stops once improvement in the model fit is no longer statistically significant. Backward selection is the opposite of that. It starts with all the predictors in the model, and then removes the least explanatory, and then stops when all the predictors in the model are statistically significant. So we'll just do that process of removing predictors until all of the predictors are statistically significant. And then sequential replacement is a, is a mixture or hybrid of forward and backward selection. You start with no predictors in the model, so just the intercept only model, and then you sequentially add the most explanatory predictors. And then the algorithm looks at the model after it's added a uh, predictor and then sees if there's any other predictors that were previously added to see if they, they are no longer statistically significant. If they um, are no longer statistically significant, then, it's, then it removes them. And then this procedure will stop once the model fit is uh, uh, no longer um, significantly improved by adding more uh, predictors. So the package that we're going to be using to calculate these criterion-based methods and the stepwise procedures is the OLSRR package. So I encourage you to look up this PDF. It's quite a neat package and very helpful for this particular important task. So the first thing you need to do when using their, these functions within this package is you need to define a linear model with all of the predictors that you want to um, consider uh, including in your final model of the data. So we're calling a, a, this variable m dot all. So it's going to have all five predictors that, that we've measured in our study. And then the first uh, function of this, um, of this package is OLS step all possible. And then you put the model, the linear model that you want to apply that function to. And what this function is doing is it is calculating, first of all, all possible models. So in our case, that's 31 models. And then for each of those models, it is calculating various criterion um, measures of uh, model fit and for all of those models. And then we're putting all that information in this variable call, all, called all.mod, so all models. So let's run that code and see what happens. And what it does is it produces a very large table, which is rather scary. Oh my goodness, look at that. So that's a pretty scary table, but let me walk you through it. So first of all, uh, the key uh, the key column here is index. So that's the um, that's the the you can think of it as as the ID for a particular model. So we have um, model one to model thirty one. So thirty one distinct models, not including the intercept um, only model. 
And then it tells you, uh, it basically produced every possible distinct model based off of the five predictors. So it's all, all possible one predictor models, all possible two predictor models, three predictor models, four predictor models, and five predictor models. And then it actually tells you which predictors are included in each of those models, as well as for each of those models, it, it calculated the unadjusted R squared, the adjusted R squared, and Mallow CP. But actually, this output doesn't show all the things it calculated, which is why I'm scrolling down here. If we do structure all mod, we can actually get a sense of, uh, we can see what, what it actually calculated in total for each of those models. So it calculated the unadjusted R squared, the adjusted R squared, what's called the predicted R squared, which I'm not going to talk about, the Mallow CP, the AIC, and then it calculates two different versions of the Bayesian information criterion and a few other things which we're not going to talk about because we're actually just going to focus on the information criterion, the Mallow CP, and then the R squared metrics, um, uh, because these are really, um, in my judgment, the most important ones. And what's really nice about this package is that it, uh, you know, it, it allows you to very quickly interpret a table like this, which is rather scary and really kind of hard to figure out which model is actually the best out of all possible models. And the way it does that is by, um, it allows you to plot the, uh, allows you to basically plot this table. So let's run that code. You say plot, and then you put the actual um, variable that you ran this function on. And what will happen is two windows will pop up, one and two. And these there's a bunch of graphs in there. And again, looks very scary. And I'm hoping to dispel your fear by, by going through this. It's actually not as complicated as it seems. So first of all, it noticed that it, uh, it has all the major uh, model fit metrics. So R squared, Mallow CP, and then the two information criterion. So AIC and then the two versions of BIC. So on the on each plot, the Y axis uh, has the value of the particular criterion. And then on the X axis, I'm going to call it a type of model uh, just for short. By type of model, I mean, is it a model with only one predictor, two predictors, three predictors, four predictors, or five predictors? And it does that for all of these plots. And what this function has done is it's plotted the values of each model within each type of model uh, for every single criterion. And moreover, it's done something very helpful. It's highlighted the model within each type of model that uh, has the highest value of that particular criterion. So let's just look at the unadjusted R squared with the um, one of all the one predictor models. It turns out that model number one, it has the highest unadjusted R squared out of all of the possible um, one predictor models that, uh, yeah, out of all the possible one predictor models given the predictors we've given this function. So what is model number one? Well, that's where we need to go back to our table. Let's just scroll up and we'll use these windows to highlight the one predictor models. So these are all the one predictor models here. Models one, two, three, four, five. And you can see which predictors are in them. And you notice model number one, which is under the index column, that, that tells you what the model IDs are. So model number one is the coercive parenting style model. So that actually has, of all the one predictor models, that has the best fit. And it's the same principle for all the other model types. So whether it's two predictors, three predictors, four predictors, or five predictors, this function tells you which one is the best fitting. So it's of, of all these uh, types of models, models 1, 6, 16, 26, and 31 are the best, uh, are the best fitting models within each type of model. And notice that those are the same models that are in all the other um, model fits. So 1, 6, 16, 26, and 31 are the same for the adjusted R squared, Mallow CP, AIC, and then the BIC metrics. Remember, um, the, for the information criterion, the lower the value, the better the fit, and same thing for Mallow CP. So that's very that's a very helpful piece of information we get from these plots. But this plot doesn't, or these plots don't just tell you um, which is the best fitting model within each type of model. It actually gives you a sense of what is overall the best 
fitting model of all possible models, which is 31. 31 possible models, I mean. And if you're, maybe some of you have already picked up on this, it looks like that a four predictor model uh, has the best overall fit, meaning it has the best, it has the most optimal balance of all these different uh, ways of getting at model fit. So specifically, it seems to be that model 26 is probably the best fitting model of child aggression score. So it has the the highest or one of the highest R squared and adjusted R squares. It has the lowest Mallow CP. It also has the lowest AIC and one of the lowest uh, BICs, at least based off of this measure, and the lowest BIC based off of this measure. So what is model 26? So it's a four predictor model. And let's go back to our table to figure out which one it is. So let's go down model 26, which is here. So we see it has model 26 is a uh, four predictor multiple regression with coercive parenting style video games. So the amount of time a kid plays video games, the sibling aggression scores and the amount to which they have additives in their diet. So that actually turns out based off of these metrics to be the best fitting model. So that's a very helpful piece of information. Now, what we did was a kind of very involved process by looking at all possible models. So this package makes our life a little bit simpler by just focusing on the best subset of each type of model. And remember by type of model, I mean whether it has one predictor, two predictors, et cetera. So you use this function called OLS step best subset, and it'll calculate the best of each particular subset. So then you can figure out of the best subsets, which one is actually the best model. That's a lot of bests in one sentence. Um, let me just run the code and, and this will all make sense, hopefully. So let's run it and take a peek and it should produce something very similar to what we just saw. Open it up a little bit. So look at this. So we have uh, the best subset of each type of model. So either one predictor, two predictors, three predictors, uh, four predictors, or five predictors. And it turns out the best model within the, the type of model of having one predictor is the one with the course of parenting style. The best model within all possible two predictor models is one with the course of parenting style and video game playing, et cetera. And then this output shows the model fit um, uh, measures for each of those best fitting models, the best subset. And again, you can look at the structure of that, out, of, that um, of the output. You can see that it calculated all the, those um, different criterion. And also you can plot this to uh, make your life a bit easier to figure out which one of the best subsets, which one is overall the best fitting model. So let's do that. And we should get the same two plots or two windows. And it's the same plots, but because we're only considering one model for each type of model, it's just a line plot. And this in, in actually, shows us in shows us much more clearly that uh, the four predictor model specifically uh, the one yeah the four predictor model is the best overall fitting model it has the highest r squared um, it has the lowest cp the lowest aic and you know more or less the lowest bic depending on which bic measure and you know based off of these you know converging lines of evidence you might say uh, we can say that of the best subset model number four with these four predictors is the best of the best. And what is model number four? Well, it's model 26, which we saw um, just, a, just a moment ago. And model 26 is the one with the course of parenting style, the amount of time a kid plays video games, sibling aggression, and the additives in their diet. So that's the criterion-based methods. Um, and then finally, to end off this tutorial, we're gonna talk very briefly about how to calculate or how to run the forward selection and backward selection and the sequential replacement procedures. Let's just run them and see what happens. So you, to run them, you apply the, to run a forward selection, you apply this function with the uh, OLS step forward underscore P, so it's using P values. 
and you put the model that you want to that has all the predictors that you want to consider and I'm putting details as false because otherwise it generates this very large output it's just going to by doing details as false it's just going to show the final um, the final um, outcome of this uh, of this forward selection procedure so let's run that and so now we can see what happened so it it ultimately converged on a four predictor model so in step one it entered the uh, most explanatory predictor which was the coercive parenting style and then progressively added or, or iteratively added more predictors to the model and then stopped when improvement in the model fit was no longer statistically significant so notice that it it stopped uh, uh, before adding um, the television predictor because television actually wasn't a, st um, a statistically significant predictor um, in the overall model. So it, it converged on the same, this is model 26 um, that we saw above. Backward selection sort of does the opposite. So it, it, it starts with all the predictors in the model and then and then sequentially or iteratively removes the least explanatory predictor and then stops when all the predictors are significant. So it removed the least explanatory um, predictor, which was the television predictor. And then after it removed that, the four remaining predictors were all statistically significant. So it just did one step and then it was finished with the backward selection. And then finally, sequential replacement again converged on the same answer that uh, that the four predictor model is the best um, fitting model uh, for the uh, aggression scores using the methods that I described above. And that takes us to the end of this tutorial. Um, so that is in a nutshell how you can in R um, apply um, these sort of uh, predictor selection procedures using criterion based methods and stepwise procedures to build your multiple linear regression models. So thank you very much for your time. Next tutorial, we are going to talk about collinearity and multicollinearity, again, using the child aggression study data. Um, until next time, I, I'm very grateful for you taking the time to, to listen to these tutorials and I hope they're helpful. So uh, until next time, take care. Bye.